Today I want to talk a little bit about binge eating. Um, this is a topic some of you have reached out to me about and I know it's something that could be difficult to talk about. So I want to go through some of the signs and symptoms and different ways you can treat it and stop binge eating. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is kind of um, distinguish the difference between binge eating and emotional eating because I think these can be intertwined sometimes and they are very different. You know, emotional eating is something that almost everyone's experienced. Like it's pretty common to go through periods of it. Um, you know, if you're doing it all the time, that's something that you could try to fix and that's a different issue. But if you ever came home from a long day and just ordered a pizza or had a cupcake, like this is emotional eating. If you're going through a hard time, you know, like I said, that's kind of common. Binge eating is something that's almost a little bit mindless. Like you're not conscious of what you're doing. You're just sitting there kind of eating you never really feel full, it's really large amounts, or you even keep eating after you feel full. Or sometimes there's a behavior associated with it where you're like, well, I've already done bad, so I might as well keep on going. That's a common like association or trigger with, being, with binge eating. So as you can see, one is definitely um, a little bit more serious and there's a lot more psychological and emotional aspects to it versus just, I had a bad day and I want to have this cookie or cupcake or ice cream, whatever it is. So now that I've kind of explained a little bit of the difference, I want to go a little more into binge eating and help, you know, just explain signs and symptoms and way you can move past it and treat it. So there's three kind of associations with binge eating that I just want to lay out and explain. The first one is a diet mentality. So diet mentality is kind of having that, like almost the mentality that goes along with the diet. So you're constantly restricting yourself. Um, you're always thinking about food. It's almost like where you never really feel like you're gonna be fully satisfied because you're always on a diet. Like you can't have these full portions. You're always thinking it's less about eating foods that make you happy and nourish you and knowing that they're doing good for your body versus like it's constantly thinking about restriction. Just that mindset in general is a huge cause and trigger of binge eating. The next one is psychological. So this could be any feelings of stress, anxiety, low self-esteem, um, you know, anything, even if you associate anxiety or fear or worry with food, any of those symptoms can definitely trigger and make binge eating worse. And the last one is social pressure. Um, I think this is even more common now in our generation. So, you know, first of all, there's always been societal social pressure of a way you're supposed to look, you know, whether you're looking in magazines or billboards and now especially with social media and Instagram, um, you know, and a lot of these things unfortunately aren't even real. There's so much photo retouching and you know, everyone that puts out things on social media, it tends to be just the perfect things or just the right angles. But these social pressures, when you're looking at it can make you think that you have to look a certain way and you know, look like this. And that can definitely, you know, trigger signs of any kind of eating disorder, but also binge eating. So those are the three, I think most common factors. There's definitely other things that go into it, but I wanted to cover those because I think those are the most relatable and maybe something that, I don't know, maybe anyone's even experienced some of them, one or all three. Now let's get into signs and symptoms of binge eating. Binge eating is a little bit mindless and another big sign of it is when you're doing it alone. So if you're by yourself, maybe you don't want anyone to see you, if you're embarrassed, um, eating alone like that or making sure that no one's watching you is definitely a sign of binge eating. Also, if you're eating past the time when you're full or past the point when you're full, it's not even like you're eating because you're hungry or maybe eating because you enjoy it, you're just eating to eat. It's almost like a feeling of control that's the biggest difference between, you know, just having a good like veg out session with your friends or family versus like actual binge eating. One more thing I want to go over is the main repercussions or consequences of binge eating. Now, obviously, you know, it's a negative to be overweight or to underweight, um, but really it's, it's looks aside, it's damaging your health. So binge eating can lead to high blood pressure, high cholesterol, obesity, type two diabetes, even mental and emotional disorders where you can get anxiety, fear, depression. If you associate food with negative thoughts, if it's always like fearful eating or anxiety, or you feel stressed or anxious unless you eat continuously, these are signs of binge eating and it just overall be detrimental to your health. So now that I've gone through signs and symptoms of you know emotional eating, binge eating, I really wanna share some great tips on how to treat it. And you know, this is not me like specifically trying to treat any of you out there. I just wanna share things that I've learned and researched through education and I think could really help. So the first thing, like we said, is diet mentality. I think this may be like one of the top things that everyone should focus on. Even if you're not binge eating, um, 
maybe working on this now could prevent you from ever getting to that point because you never know what triggers could lead you into something else. Um, I think prevention is key for everything. Diet mentality is just not sustainable. It's not something that anyone's gonna do long-term, which is why, I mean, if you've watched my other videos, I hate any kind of like crazy diet that leaves, makes you restrict so many things. I'm always thinking about like overall picture for your body, for your health. And if it's something that you can't happily maintain longer than like three to six months, that's kind of my rule, then why would I even get into it? Because I'm not gonna be able to do it forever. I'm not gonna be happy. And if you really think about it, if you're doing all this dieting so that you can look good and that's gonna make you happy, but you're so miserable day to day doing the dieting, you're defeating the end purpose anyway, which is happiness. And I think that's everyone's biggest goal in life is to just, you know, everything you're searching for and looking for is to make you happy. So day to day, this is really important. And day to day leads to month, which you see gear. And then that's how you just live an overall happy life. So if you are dieting, I highly recommend changing your mindset, not on like what you can't have and what you shouldn't eat and thinking about what foods you should be eating. And when you just make this shift in your head, it's not like I shouldn't eat these desserts or I shouldn't eat this rice because it's high carb. Whereas think of it like, oh, I should eat these lentils because they're so full of iron and healthy carbs and protein and they're gonna keep me really full and healthy. I should eat these like dark leafy greens in the salad because they're full of antioxidants and they're gonna make my skin glow and they're gonna give me energy. Um, literally thinking of food like that, that's what I did that made, you know, it's really made me stick to what I do and makes me feel like I'm not on a diet. Like I've, for the past nine or 10 years, I've been eating this way and I've never felt like I was on a diet. It's really just a lifestyle. So you think about that and also eat certain foods that really satiate you and keep you full. Um, this is super important. I think one mistake I even made when I first got into healthy eating was that I thought I should just be eating like veggies and salads and like super light all the time. I actually thought that was the right thing, but I got way too skinny. Um, I just, even when I look back at pictures, I hate it. I feel like I'm so much happier now with where I'm at. So focusing on eating like very healthy, but dense and satiating foods. So I love like raw almond butter, um, avocado, like fresh coconut is high in fat. It's great for energy. Um, certain sprouted grains, like I love quinoa. Um, you know, even like vegetables, like starchier vegetables, like a sweet potato, a red potato, focusing on things like that that are actually good whole foods. You start to build kind of like um, mindful eating when you're eating them, knowing what you're eating, what, what it's doing for you. And then you have like a positive relationship with food instead of a negative. And once you have that positive relationship with certain foods, it will kind of by default make you like not want the other things because you're going to be more mindful of like what you're doing for your body and what different foods you should be eating. So that kind of brings me into the next one. So we've got diet mentality and the next one is mindfulness in general. There's so many times, even if you have never been uh, done binge eating or experienced it, um, there's so many times where we're not mindful of what we're even eating or putting into our mouth. And I, this is one thing I love to tell people because this can help you avoid so much unnecessary snacking. Like if you're starving and driving and just like eating chips and not paying attention, you're not even gonna enjoy it. Like if you're gonna eat something unhealthy, you might as well like really enjoy and savor it or else it's not even worth all that extra fat and calories. That's what I tell myself. I'm gonna eat it, I better enjoy it. So. I've made a huge shift into sitting and like letting that be my time to eat, even trying not to like work as much. Of course, is isn't like realistic every single day, but I like to really like savor and be mindful and like know what I'm eating and take that little time, you know, even if it's 15 minutes, like for a lunch break, whatever it is, and just focus on what you're doing and eating and mindfulness in general will just make you make better decisions throughout the day. Um, you know, tips on that yoga, meditation, really trying to be patient and like learn to get into practices like that will help you stay mindful throughout like other decisions in your day. And the last thing I want to go over is really just practicing health at every size, every shape. Um, I think this is something that is so misconstrued and confused on social media. Um, this can be on like, whether it's video, Instagram, anything, you know, we all have this idea of what the ideal body size should be. And, and it almost gives us a false impression of goals we have for ourselves. Everyone is born with their own body shape and size. Now you can definitely get very fit, like lose weight, gain weight, and that can change, but your actual shape, like whether or not you're a little more pear shaped or straight down, or if you have big hips or small hips, um, 
you know, if your legs are like more muscular or thinner, like everyone is born with a specific body shape and yes, you can change it, but you're not going to ever be able to get someone else's body shape. And knowing and accepting that is just a huge step in general because you can work and work. I mean, till like the day you die and like work harder than anyone, but that's just the way you were born. I think accepting it and finding a form of self love will just put you at so much more peace and also give you more realistic expectations. And just to kind of mention again, don't live your life through social media or Instagram. Um, you know, it's funny for me to say because I, I post so much content on social media, but I really always try to make sure that I'm portraying something a little more realistic. Um, but so much out there can, you know, tends to not be, and things can be certain angles or filters or Photoshop. So, you know, don't, don't give yourself unrealistic expectations that you see online and like, let it make you feel bad. Um, you should use social media for inspiration and happiness. And if there's something that's making you feel bad or triggering an emotion, especially when it comes to eating, just click the unfollow button and you don't have to see it anymore. It's as easy as that out of sight, out of mind. I hope you guys like this video. Um, if you relate to this at all, I'm also going to leave some resources below in the description. If you want to read a little more on this topic, if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments and I'll make sure to try to get to as many as I can and I'll see you guys next time.